you haven't been to the Dollar Tree lately, head on over because they have all of their Easter and spring inventory out. I'm so excited. I love crafting for this time of year and I have a lot of fun ideas to share with you. I've made two of these crisscross ribbon wreaths on my channel before and I wanted to make one for spring too. From the Dollar Tree, I grabbed two of the circular wreath forms. Any color will work, but I was lucky enough to find the gold beige color, which I think is really pretty. I'm also going to be using some ribbon. I have this green gingham ribbon on hand that I wanna use up. I have two partial rolls and one full roll. And then I'll be using a bunch of different embellishments to decorate my wreath. I have some bunny picks, some burlap carrots, and some floral picks. I needed to attach both of my wreath forms together so I laid one on top of the other and I made sure that they were facing in opposite directions so that each side rounded out. Then I made sure that all of the crossbars on the wreath lined up and I'm just going to use zip ties to attach mine together so I went to where one of those crossbar sections is and I just loaded my zip tie from the back to the front and tightened it down. I'll zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see I'm just taking the zip tie from the back to the front and I went the whole way around the wreath form making sure that I got a zip tie at each intersection. After all of the excess was cut off of my zip ties, I went back through and I just turned the zip tie connector so that it was facing towards the back so you wouldn't see it through the ribbon. Starting on the back side with some hot glue, I added a drop to one of those zip ties and I laid my ribbon over it. Then I took my ribbon and I started wrapping it across the two wreath forms going on a diagonal. Now, like I said, I had two partial rolls of this ribbon and one full roll, but I wasn't sure that it was going to be enough for me to cover the entire wreath form with ribbon. So what I chose to do is cover it until there were only two sections of the wreath remaining, and then I went back on itself and covered it the other way. If you have enough ribbon, you could cover the entire wreath form, but because I really wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough, I decided to leave two sections open because I knew I could cover it up with decorations later. So once I had my ribbon going in one direction on an angle, then I went back through and I started wrapping it in the opposite direction so that it would cross back over on itself. Now the great thing about this is you don't have to use a lot of hot glue as you're wrapping. I always just added a little drop everywhere that there was a zip tie just to make sure that my ribbon wouldn't slide around too much. And I made sure that I always had the glue on the back side so that you wouldn't see it through the front of the ribbon. I wanted to create a double bow for the center of my wreath. So I'm taking some wider burlap ribbon. I cut one piece down to the width that I would like after I folded it into thirds. And then I took a second piece and I folded it into thirds again. And I made sure that it was just slightly narrower than the first piece. And then I cut another piece for the tails. Then I stacked all three of my pieces of ribbon on top of each other. I cinched them in the middle and tied them with some jute cord. And this gave me a really cute double bow for on my wreath. I wanted to make sure you wouldn't see the wreath form through any of my embellishments. So I did take another piece of that burlap ribbon and I just wound it around there so that it would blend in with everything that I was going to put on top of it. Now came the fun part. I just gathered up a bunch of florals and leaves that I had in my stash. I had some glittery Easter eggs that I've been holding on to for a while. I started with a base of some ferns because this is one of my favorite types of greenery for the spring. And then once I had that laid down, I just started building up a few other pieces of greenery and some eggs and then of course I placed my bow in the center and I did use one of those little bunny picks for on the center of my bow. This is a really fun wreath. It comes together pretty quickly because the base of it is just wrapping ribbons around the two wreaths forms and then you can get creative with how you want to decorate yours. You could add a ton of flowers. You could decorate it the whole way around and I always like to add my decorations to the bottom bottom of the wreath, but because there's not really a set direction on this wreath, you could add your focal point to the side or even the top. Just play around, have a good time, and this is a really great spring wreath. I 
have an electric fireplace in my living room and I always like creating a garland to hang across the front of it. I saw these gingham bunnies in the Dollar Tree and I thought they were so cute and I really like that they came in a wide variety of colors. I'm going to use the pink ones today, but you could mix up the colors however you'd like. I'm also going to use two sheets of white felt and some jute cord. I'm creating a banner style garland, so I needed to cut my felt down into more manageable pieces. I laid one of my bunnies down to get a good idea of how big of a piece I would need for each banner. And the measurement that I came up with was four inches by seven inches. This worked out really well for me. So if you're going to use the same bunnies, I'll save you the hassle of figuring it out and just cut your pieces down to four by seven. I'm using six bunnies because that's how many came in a pack. And it worked out really perfectly because I was able to get three banners out of each piece of felt. To create the banner shape at the bottom of my piece of felt, I laid my ruler down, and since my piece was four inches wide, I placed a dot at the two inch mark. Now my ruler is an inch and a half wide, so I'm cutting up an inch and a half to that dot straight up the center, and then I'm going from each corner up to that dot also. As I got closer to the dot, I made sure that I cut that marker away so that you wouldn't be able to see it from the front. And then I just repeated that on all six pieces. So you can see here again, I'm cutting straight up the center to that dot and then I'm just cutting from each corner up to that dot also and that gives me a nice uniform banner on each piece. I realized that the back side of the bunnies look just as nice as the gingham side so I wanted to switch these up a little bit to add a little bit of variation on my garland. It was easy enough to pull the bow off the front of the bunny on the gingham side and then I just replaced it on the back side on the plain side and you can see it kind of looks like one of those little Easter peep bunnies and I did that on three of them so then I had three of the gingham bunnies and then three of just the plain pink bunnies. It doesn't take much hot glue to get these bunnies attached to the garland pieces. I just ran a line of hot glue right down the backside center of each bunny and I laid it in the center of my banner pieces. Next, I needed some holes to fit my jute cord through. So at the very top, I just folded the top down about a half an inch and I took my scissors and I cut a very small slit on each side of my bunny. And you can see when I pull it apart, it's not very big at all. And because felt material doesn't fray, you're not gonna see any rough edges from doing this. But it's a great way to be able to attach your banner pieces and have them be able to slide around so that once I got it up on my fireplace, I was able to slide the pieces until they were evenly spread out across the front. Now it's up to you how you wanna string your pieces onto your jute cord or ribbon or yarn or whatever you're choosing to use. I didn't wanna see the jute cord from the front, so I'm going in through the top first and then I'm winding the jute cord through the back side of the banner piece and then back up through the back side. If you did it the opposite way the jute cord would be seen from the front and I think that looks cute too. I just wanted mine to be on the back side. When I was browsing the internet for inspiration for Easter crafts, I kept seeing sock bunnies pop up on my Pinterest page. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I grabbed a pair of their fuzzy Snuggadoo socks and I also got a bag of rice. I wasn't able to find a solid pair of socks at my Dollar Tree. I could only find these ones that had the white accents, but I figured I could make them work anyway. Now, if you have a solid color pair of socks, you don't have to do this step, but I wanted to take some of that excess white off of the toe portion of my sock. So I tied a piece of jute cord around the bottom of the white part, and then I turned it inside out so that you wouldn't see any of that white from the bottom of the bunny. Then I put the whole sock inside of a mason jar because it just made it a lot easier to get the rice in there. And I started pouring in the rice. Now it seems like it fills up really fast, but you have to kind of pat it down and really work that rice in there because you want to make sure you have a good amount of rice in there so that your bunny will hold its shape. So I kept pouring and then tapping it down and pushing it down with my hands to make sure that I had the sock as full as I could get it. Then I pulled it out of the mason jar and I worked all of the rice down towards the bottom of the sock and I left about four inches at the top and that's where I tied on my second piece of jute cord. 
Now, like I said before, I needed to get that white part off of the toe portion of my bunny, but if you're just using a plain color pair of socks, you don't have to do that. You can just fill your sock up without doing anything to the toe. Once I had that second piece of jute cord in place, then I went down where I thought I had enough room for the head and I tied another piece of jute cord. So you can already see the body of our bunny is coming together pretty quickly. And because I do have a white heel on the, the, the sock, it left me a white spot on the bunny, which I didn't really mind. And you actually could use that for the face of the bunny if you wanted to. I cut off the white that was at the top of my bunny at the top of the sock and then I started working on the ears. I cut right down through the center of the front and back of the sock and then I just started cutting the ear shape in. So you can see I'm kind of rounding it with my scissors until I had some nice rounded ears for my bunny. For my first bunny, I wanted to create a simple bow tie. So I took a piece of burlap ribbon, I added a small bead of hot glue to one end, and then I looped it over and I cinched it in the center. And while that glue was still just a bit warm and I had accordion pleated the middle, I took a craft clip and I just held it in place with a craft clip because I wasn't ready to tie the center yet. Then I took another small piece of that same burlap ribbon and I folded it into thirds so that I could take it to my bow tie then and glue it around the center where you would normally tie it with some jute cord. And that gave it a nice finished look and gave it more of a bow tie look rather than a craft bow. Then I added my bow tie to my first bunny with just a little bit of hot glue. Now I decided not to add any faces to my bunnies, but you could do that if you'd like. For my second bunny, I instead of adding a bow, I added some greenery and a little sparkly foam ball at the top of my bunny. And then as a finishing touch, I did have a few pom-poms laying around. So on the back side of my bunny, I just added a pom-pom as a little tail. of felt bunny garland at the Dollar Tree is such a good deal. You get eight felt bunnies for $1.25. I grabbed two packs because I wanted to make some bunny pockets. So you can see here, there's a lot of different colors in this garland. There's some really bright colors and there's some pastel colors. I tend to go with more pastel colors, so that's what I'm going to use today, but feel free to switch it up however you like. The first thing I had to do was take all of the bunnies off of the ribbon that they came on, which was easy. They weren't glued down or anything. I just had to slide them off. After I had both garlands taken apart, I grabbed two bunnies of the same color. I'm using the purple one here, and I started by taking the pom-pom tail off of one of the bunnies. Then I laid it over top of the other bunny just to make sure that it matched up evenly, which it did, and I found a spot on the bunny where I wanted to cut it straight across. I'm using pinking shears here, but you really don't have to because felt doesn't fray. I just thought it gave it a nice touch. You could either hot glue or sew the this pocket onto your bunny. I don't have a sewing machine, so I'm just using my fine tip hot glue gun here. And surprisingly enough, this felt was thick enough that you didn't see the hot glue through it. So that made me really happy. I started at the bottom. I added just a very fine bead of hot glue around the feet of the bunny. And then once I had that lined up and glued down, then I went up on each side using my fine tip glue gun to secure the pocket into place. You have a lot of different options when it comes to decorating these bunny pockets. I wanted to keep mine fairly simple. I started by taking two lengths of jute cord and just creating a simple bow. And then I hot glued that at the top of my bunny to cover up those little holes that were there from where it was strung onto the ribbon. After I created a few of the pockets, I realized I had all these bunny heads laying around that I didn't know what to do with. So I took one of the bunny heads and I folded it in half and I just cut a simple heart shape out of it to act as a second embellishment for my pockets. Once I had all of my hearts cut out, I took my glue gun and I just ran a bead of hot glue right down the center of the heart and placed it on the pocket part of my bunny. This way the heart would flap open a little bit and give the pocket 
itself just a little bit more dimension. And I switched up the colors so that each bunny had a different color heart on its belly. Now I think these pockets are super cute and you can do a lot with them. You can either put some Easter treats in them or I had another idea where I thought it would be really cute to use these as silverware holders for your Easter dinner. You can fit a fork, a knife, and a spoon in there and I think that would look really cute at each place setting. years ago, I did a whole video on making coasters with things you can get from the Dollar Tree. I still love making coasters and when I saw these wooden egg ornaments, I knew they would make great coasters. I also grabbed a few gift bags that had fun Easter prints on them and I'm going to be using one of the cork sheets that you can find in the Crafter Square section. The wooden eggs are really thin, so in order to make them thicker and a little more sturdy, I just used some hot glue to glue two of them together. And don't worry about the holes at the top, we're gonna be covering that up anyway. Next, I got to work cutting off the bottom of my bag and I cut up one side so that I could lay it flat. Now, because the pattern on this bag, the eggs are pretty large, I wanted to be mindful of where I was placing my eggs so that the egg pattern didn't look off center or anything like that on my egg. So I found a good spot where I could center one of the eggs inside of my egg and then I just traced around my egg shape with a pencil. I did two of each pattern so I traced two eggs onto one gift bag and two onto the other. I took my time cutting out my eggs from the gift bag, but don't worry if you don't get them perfect. We'll be able to clean up any rough edges later. I'm using some matte finish Mod Podge. I just applied a very, very thin coat to the front of the egg, and then I laid my piece of gift bag on top of it. I didn't apply Mod Podge over the front to start. I wanted to make sure that the underneath Mod Podge dried first. That way I could avoid any kind of wrinkling in the paper. Usually the wrinkling comes when you put the Mod Podge on top, so I wanted to get that thin base coat down first and let it dry really, really well. Well before I moved on to applying the next coat. After I let that base coat dry really, really well, I took my sanding block and I went around all of the edges. This took out any imperfections anywhere that I had cut the paper just slightly too big. It took any of that excess off and finished off the edges nicely. Now that everything is nice and cleaned up, then I went back through and applied two more coats of Mod Podge over the top of my coasters to protect the surface from any spills and and it even helps protect the wood a little bit from the heat of any kind of mug that you're going to place on it. After my top coats of Mod Podge were nice and dry, I got to work creating a backer for my coasters. I'm using the cork sheet here and I'm able to get all four eggs cut out of one sheet. I'm just using a pen here and I'm tracing over the top of the cork sheet. And then I started cutting it out, but I made sure that I stayed about an eighth of an inch inside that pen line so that it would fit on the back of the egg and nothing would stick out. Now these cork sheets are self-adhesive, so all I had to do then was peel the backing off and apply it to the back side of my egg. An alternative to using the cork sheets would be just to use a piece of felt. You can do the same thing. Trace your egg out onto your piece of felt, cut it out, and hot glue it to the back. I also wanted to show you that these treat bags from the Dollar Tree, these really cute bunny ones with the floppy ears, are the perfect size to store your coasters in. I was able to fit all four of mine in with no problem. So this is a great storage idea, or you could use this to give as a gift to someone else. Thanks for coming to hang out and craft with me today. Let me know in the comments if you've already started decorating for spring. I left some videos on the screen that I think you might like. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.